The Truth the Girls. Hi everyone. Well, a huge meta-analysis was done on homeopathy. Well, it's a it's a meta-analysis of meta-analyses. So it's like the mother of all meta-analyses. This is what was circulating on Facebook on a uh, a website called I Effing Love Science. So people were circulating this article and following up with comments like uh, surprise, surprise, and a degree in homeopathy is a degree in baloney. So, you know, of course everybody's saying, well, there you go, there's the proof, it doesn't work. Uh, but I am the kind of person who likes to go and look at the data for herself. So I had to go and look at this report. I've looked at it, you know, I've been spending a lot of time looking at it for the last week and I, I just want to share with you what I found. It's not that they've proven homeopathy doesn't work. They just don't have enough evidence to say, yes, it works and it's an adequate alternative to conventional treatment. What they did, like I said, they, they reanalyzed the data from other previous meta-analyses on homeopathy. So this included studies on a, a large, a wide variety of conditions, which are all uh, listed here. So it says here, 49 of the included systematic reviews examined the effectiveness of homeopathy for a specific clinical condition, and the remaining eight were reviews that examined effectiveness of homeopathy as a whole. The problem with these was that they were looking at the value of homeopathy based on a review of um, homeopathic treatment for a number of different ailments, such as this one by Al Tunk et al. Uh, they were looking to assess the evidence of any type of therapeutic or preventive intervention testing homeopathy for childhood and adolescent ailments. And they were looking at 16 studies on nine different conditions. And for each one of these, uh, there was only one, two, or three studies included. Actually, most of them, it's only one or two. So you can imagine that if someone was setting out to assess the value of pharmaceutical medical treatment and they looked at 16 studies on nine different ailments, one, two, or three studies on each ailment, and got, I mean, what kind of results can you get from that? You, you get, you can't get anything solid. And then from this, you conclude that pharmaceutical treatment has no proven value for, for the treatment of disease, I mean, that would be ridiculous, but that's sort of what they did with these reviews, although many of them acknowledge that this isn't really a good way to go about it. So then this review took all these studies that had been included and sorted them by ailment and, and looked at the evidence. There are problems here, though, also. I mean, in any of these studies for any given ailment, they were looking both at individually prescribed medication and also at formula preparations in, in weak dilutions from the pharmacy. So this would be like if you did a study on say allergy medications, a meta-analysis, and, and some of the studies were on medications prescribed from it by a doctor and others were from like stuff that you pick up at the pharmacy. And on top of that, in some of these analyses for any given condition, there were people in the studies being, being, an, being assessed in the, in the meta-analysis who were on uh, medications that are known to have contraindicatory effects. Like if they were studying ADHD and some of the kids in the, some of the studies are on Ritalin, well that kind of messed things up because Ritalin is known to sort of not work well with, with homeopathy. It interferes with the effects of homeopathy. So that would be like if you did a study say on opiate painkillers and some of the people in some of your studies were on Suboxone or on, or on you know, Naltrexone or whatever, one of these kind of things, um, then you wouldn't get very reliable results. For some of these conditions that they looked at, they had really no evidence whatsoever. There was nothing, maybe one study, and you can't come to any conclusions based on one study. So they just had to say, we don't have any evidence. While, while I'm on the subject though, one of those was on HIV, um, homeopathic treatment for HIV. And the, they had a placebo group, uh, a group of asymptomatic HIV carriers, and a group of symptomatic with, I think they call it generalized lymphadenopathy, um, one group like that. And they, they found that the homeopathic treatment that didn't have any effect on the asymptomatic carriers, but it had an effect on the ones who were having symptoms, the lymphadenopathy. Um, not on them, but in the lab, it, it was affecting CD4 counts. So, so that can't be a placebo. So even though it's only one study and you can't come to any conclusions and say, well, forego HIV treatment, take homeopathy, but it is interesting. Now I want you to know, I'm not doing this to prove to you that this article was wrong and all the st 
studies were wrong and homeopathy works. Or, no, I'm just looking at this evidence because I mean, it doesn't do any good to just read an article from a, you know, an, uh, a website called I effing love science, who obviously is against homeopathy. Um, you know, read an article and, and just based on what some third hand person says, just say, oh, well, there you go. It doesn't work. Because I used to think like that about homeopathy. I used to think like there's no way it can work. But then I found out that it, it, it's been shown to work on a lab level. That, that was what really kind of made me think maybe I'm just not understanding something about this. Uh, because there had been studies where it, it was shown that in ultra dilutions, succussed ultra dilutions, it had the same effect on cells as the the product if it hadn't been diluted, ultra diluted. It it had the it had the same effect. So so how can it do that if it's if it's an inert substance, a placebo? So to prove to you that I'm not only going to give you the positive side of this story or the side in favor of homeopathy, I'm going to tell you that they they had a lot of studies on upper respiratory tract infections and none of them showed any evidence in favor of homeopathy. Same for dental pain basically. Chronic fatigue syndrome, there was a little bit of an effect for fatigue but not for the other symptoms associated with it, although you'd kind of think that chronic fatigue syndrome, that the main symptom would be fatigue, so what does that tell you? I don't know. And uh, anxiety and insomnia also, it, it, didn't, it didn't seem to to prove that homeopathy worked. Although they were looking at so many different kinds of groups and with different symptoms, different people with different symptoms, with different treatments. So, you know, it's it, all you can come away from this thinking is more research is needed at the very least. Studies also show that for the treatment of anxiety and depression, cuddling a floppy rabbit is superior to placebo. Placebo? Floppy rabbit! Mm. Oh, that's my therapist. She smells good too. Several of those meta-analyses that I mentioned before that looked at a whole bunch of different conditions, treated in many different ways, even despite all that, and the fact that they said this wasn't a good way to do it, several of them said that the findings were trending in favor of homeopathy. And then with certain conditions, uh, there were quite a lot of favorable findings. For example, otitis media, this one is compared to standard care and there is no significant difference between homeopathy and standard care. Um, this one, placebo, significant difference in favor of homeopathy. The next one, placebo, less failure in homeopathy group, non-significant, but significant decrease in symptoms. Um, this one, compared to conventional therapy, equivalent efficacy compared to conventional therapy. Again, no significant difference. This means it was as effective. But the, the problem was there were only a few studies. So even with that, you, you cannot recommend homeopathy as an alterna alternative to, um, to antibiotics, but it, it doesn't prove that homeopathy doesn't work. In fact, you kind of have to wonder how could it have equivalent re results to antibiotics if it's nothing but a placebo. Okay, and here is the data on diarrhea, and here are the results. Okay, this one is versus placebo, no significant difference. This one versus placebo, significant difference in favor of homeopathy. This one also. Uh, this one not. This one yes. This one not. This one yes. This one positive trend, but not significant. And I actually looked at the details of these studies. And I looked at four of them by, I think they were all four by Jacobs et al. And three where they used individualized homeopathy, they were the ones that had a significant difference in favor of homeopathy. The one that didn't, which was the larger study, they were using a formula, like just a standard formula preparation, which isn't equivalent. I mean, it, this is again, this is like buying your stuff OTC from the pharmacy. It's not the same as getting a medication from the doctor. And that was the one that found no real significant difference. And if you look at the studies on ADHD, you'll see that uh, they also had some pretty favorable results for homeopathy. Okay, I'm just going to show you one more. This was in treatment of flu-like illness. This is something called oscillococcinum that you can get at the pharmacy. And for some of these, and this one, it, it did favor homeopathy. Um, this one, these were all very, you know, favorable outcomes here by and large.
all the gray parts are in, in favor of homeopathy. But they say they can't recommend it for treatment of the flu. So I'm not going to show you any more stuff, but go and have a look at it. Basically, what it comes down to is that there are small trials, um, and there's just really not that much good quality information. Well, there are a lot of other trials on homeopathy that just couldn't be included because, for example, they weren't blind. But there was one on um, malaria in Ghana, and was it 90% of patients responded to homeopathy? And then in the second part, 80% uh, responded to homeopathy versus 72 to uh, quinine drugs. So, I mean, what, is, is malaria that easy to treat that you just give somebody a placebo and 90% will respond? You'd have to kind of look at that and think, well, you know, maybe something's going on, even if they, they can't include it here. And to be fair, I'd like to point out that there are some pharma drugs that are on the market that have been basically proven to be neither effective nor safe. They have dangerous side effects, and yet they're promoted as safe and effective all the time. For example, Tamiflu. For the flu, it reduces the length of illness by half a day. And then there's a flu shot. And overall, the flu shot is found to only reduce seasonal flu-like illness um, by 6% or one day. And yet, uh, we're all told to get our flu shots. The government bought like 50 million doses when we had the swine flu here. The, the U.S. government stockpiles antivirals like Tamiflu for flu, even though they don't do anything really. And then there are also statins. For a certain group of men who have certain risk factors, it extends your life by six months. Uh, for women and men over 65, it's only five weeks. So it really does nothing. And the other drug in this category, I'd say, would be antidepressants. It's not that much more effective than a placebo. And this could be accounted for the fact that it, it's an active placebo because you actually get side effects from it. So then that reinforces the placebo effect. I'm not saying antidepressants aren't good for anything. I know that they, they seem to work for certain things, but not really for depression. And on the other hand, they have very serious side effects. People can go psychotic from them and actually it raises your risk of suicide. And still people are told to, you know, take antidepressants and statins and flu shots and Tamiflu. And there really isn't much evidence to support that. So there's a bit of a double standard here. So in my opinion, this, this meta-analysis, um, it just proves really that there's not enough information out there yet. That probably has something to do with funding. And so let me know what you think, and have you used homeopathy, and do you find it effective? I've used it, and it seemed to be effective. I mean, my symptoms decreased, or my problems went away, so either it was just luck, or it was the homeopathy. So let me know what you think, and thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.